All right, it's one of the rare times I'm making a video where I'm not at all sure whether I'm going to post this or not. Um, yeah, two delicate subjects, uh, sex and agoraphobia. <laughs> it's sort of, um, that sort of is the, that's it from, that's kind of defines my life, sex and agoraphobia. Um, all right, so we get to this sex thing first, and no, don't mean to imply that um, what Mel did was sex, <laughs> you know, um, just meaning that, um, you know, her dance video, and just my reaction to it, just because I was having a kind of a depressed day, and it's just kind of funny when something happens, you know, depending on what mood you take to it kind of a thing, and it was one of those kind of things where I just... Uh, I mean, just, you know, you just the desperate loneliness just fell on me like <laughs> like I wasn't already dismal and miserable enough. I had to realize, hey, there's no dancing girls in my living room. I don't got one of those. <laughs> How come there isn't one of those here? <laughs> um, and so that sort of gets us to what Heidi brought up in terms of the fact that so many people are living their lives through this stuff, this electronic thing. Um, which, you know, I think it's a good thing in a lot of ways, but I'll get to that. Um, so I'm finishing up on the, on the Mel thing, and, it, and uh, it's, it is just kind of funny. I mean, I don't mean to discourage anybody from dancing in videos. It's fun. Uh, I, 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 I danced once in my life, and I actually did it in a YouTube video. It's my thousandth video. Um, so, well, maybe I'll post the link. Um, yeah, it's down there here. Uh, um, but don't watch it. If you didn't see Silence of the Lambs, don't don't watch it because it just it'll it'll scare you in all the wrong ways. Um, because it really has to do with the it's a you know well whatever won't spoil it but whatever. Uh, that's the only time I ever danced because you know dancing is that's like quiche <laughs> you know real men don't dance or something. Um, it just works so much better when women do it. I don't know what the, I don't know why that is, but it just seems to work better from my perspective. <laughs> Uh, makes a lot more sense when a woman's doing it. Um, but yeah, it's just this whole um, the woman thing, you know, it uh, it is funny just how, um, you know, because I did notice like our video had like 500 and something views, and it's like, you know, it's like 10 times the normal number of views. Um, I only added four of those, maybe five or six, but that was all. I mean, I only added like maybe a half dozen. Um, <laughs> But it is funny, uh, you know. We're just such silly creatures. Um, so really, that's probably all I got to say on that. I mean, it's a good thing, but it's a, it's, you know, wow. Because sometimes it does make you realize that, man, <laughs> you know, my life sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. Um, so anyway, enough said on that. So moving on to um, Heidi's video. She brought up this <laughs> this horrible world word agoraphobia. I kind of wish she just said social anxiety. Just deal with it like on a social anxiety level. Um, you know, um, is computering screwing up people's sociability skills? Uh, maybe that kind of question. And I really don't think on balance. I think it's probably a trade-off. I think um, uh, you know, if I was to look at my own case, so yeah, I'll just explain briefly. Don't want to really get into it, but I've been agoraphobic for 35 years. <laughs> yeah. 30, something something like that, yeah, 35 years. Um, and it progressively got just worse and worse, and by the time I was 21, I was just, I was fucked. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it really hasn't, it's had little periods, goes up and down, up and down, and um, in some ways I'm better than I've been in the past, but um, in other ways I'm more uh, hardened to it. Uh, can't even Can't even imagine going back to the old world. Um, just impossible. I've become so dependent and eccentric and, you know, Howard Hughesy caught up in uh, my own, um, the, the world I, I'm familiar with, the one I can connect to. And that's pretty much a world I create, you know, because I don't really like what human beings do. And uh, the only way I can escape it purely is to live in my world, not their world. Um, but that's really, it really is a conditioned disorder. So I guess part of me would say that even if the internet completely consumed people, even if it gets more and more powerful, more and more virtual, it becomes more and more addictive, more and more um, attractive, and it does have some attractive features. I mean, you can pick and choose who you interact with. You can, and you have the whole world to pick over. I mean, uh, you know, Jen made a video. She's got such a face. Um, uh, you know, there was even, even, um, 
Well, there's so many of them. Um, what was the name? Uh, all natural, you know, and she's got the Australian accent, and it's just, you know, all these people from all over the friggin' place. And uh, you can't do that in the real world. Um, and of course, it's going to be attractive because you can, you can connect yourself to people that you can understand, that just speak the same language and all that crap. And it's, you know, there's just so many advantages to it. So um, I don't think it has to steal from reality any. It just has to augment it. And uh, you know, look, I would I would say eventually, yes, virtual reality is the place to be. We can create perfect worlds for ourselves suited to our own personalities. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Uh, consciousness is a brain experience. It's not a body experience. Um, so anyway, uh, go, moving on to the subject, which is agoraphobia. Um, so yeah, I, I, th I think you have to understand that these it, 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 phobic disorders in general, are, they don't just fall on you like bricks or something. They're they're built out of experiences you have, and so that that condition you. And um, it's not even a rejection of. Well, look. First off, let's just concede you can't use this one label for all people because there's so many different types of agoraphobic, so many different personalities that fall into the trap for different reasons. I mean, there's some people who are agoraphobic because they're dependent on having other people to support them, and they don't feel that support in the real world or something like that. So if they go out with people, they're okay. If they don't, they're no good. Um, so it's it's just not as it's just not as generic a syndrome as something like uh, vertigo. Um, it has a lot of nuances to it, a lot of varieties and shapes and sizes. So it's almost like using a word like schizophrenia. It really isn't fair to the schizophrenics because they can't be classified and generalized that easily. Um, but anyway, whatever it is, whatever happens to people, it's usually conditioning, and it's usually going to happen early in life rather than later in life. But it happens through experiences, and I would I would almost argue that if computers existed when I was a kid, um, I might have escaped it, just because I might have thought there was a place I could live, you know, or a way I could I could live, I could be me, and um, I, I wasn't as dependent on that world. And you know, when I grew up, all you had was reality. All you had is the real world, and the real world sucked. Okay, people were assholes and idiots. And um, there just wasn't anything for me to to, have, to build positive experiences out of. All I was seeing was just how stupid and futile life was, and I didn't see any nothing out there was comforting me at all. No, there was no humans that I found any support or um, that, I, that I could feed off of at all. None of them that were feeding me. They were just sucking my soul in a way. Um, so I be it became very, you know, I just my philosophy just tended towards making me highly antisocial, because I saw people as the cause of all that's wrong in the world. I mean, you know, there wouldn't be dead animals on the road if people didn't run them over. It was that kind of addition always going on in my head, and uh, and so it was. Uh, yeah, I, I became antisocial because I I really hated what humanity represented um, and uh, that just started being built into my sensibilities what became my comfort zone um, so but it was conditioning it's a clockwork orange kind of scenario um, and it's hard once you're there once you're stuck in that that preference um, you're it's, you're not going to change it easy because to re to, to change it you're going to have to build a whole bunch of you're going to have to reinforce a bunch of positive experiences, and that's pretty hard to do in our world, the world that we exist in. Society's not, uh, it's not a very generous place. Um, what you're more likely to get is ridicule and beat up some more. So it's like you won't even step in that water. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's hostility on the Internet. Well, you can sort of, okay, they're far enough away, you know. You can kind of just brush it off. But if somebody got into your face and pulled that crap... Um, that would make it a little bit insufferable. <laughs> um, so anyway, I don't know what to say on the, it's it's just such a complex social, social psychological thing, and it's it's just not as simple as saying getting fixed or getting better. Or um, there's just so many things that play into it that you might not be able to change. Um, 
it certainly shouldn't be against the law, so to speak, to be a perfectionist. I think it's sort of a disorder that kind of falls on people that have a uh, perfectionist ideology. Um, there, there's lots of things that are going to make you more vulnerable, let me put it that way. And uh, a lot of those things aren't negative personality traits. They're positive personality traits. They're just not positive in the society we've built because we haven't built a society that um, applauds sensitivity, um, that, uh, that applauds high standards, that applauds any of that stuff. It ridicules that stuff. It, it, uh, it, it's, it is cold and cruel real world out there. Um, so anyway, I guess I don't know if I made a real contribution. It's a, it's, a, it's a messy subject, so I don't know exactly why you want to play in it. Um, but um, I don't think computers are going to create people that are going to be more likely to have social phobias. Um, not unless the real world is beating the hell out of them somehow. Um, and if they're finding comfort on the Internet, well, then that, you know. I mean, I guess the good news is there's plenty of trolls on the Internet. So you, you might even have more people that will end up with Internet phobias um, just because they'll s step their foot into this pool and find out there's plenty of people ready to hack off their toes. Uh, so I, it's, I guess as long as this place isn't purely perfect and safe, um then maybe you don't have to worry too much. <laughs> um, and that's sort of sort of depressing. That's what it comes down to. If, if we can make this world as imperfect as the real world, then it won't be so seductive. <laughs> that does seem like the stupid way around. Um, so anyway, that's the end of my contribution. I guess I'll post the video. It wasn't that horrible. But I hate the subjects. Um, just because, yeah, that's, you know... Phew. We're not that complicated when you, you know, p pull off the veneers and all the bullshit. Um, sheesh. <laughs> Women are cool and uh, society sucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The end. Thank you very much. Until next time. Don't watch this video. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably rather you didn't. Uh, that's funny. Uh, so don't watch it. Go back to the beginning and pretend you didn't see it.